Sullivan's uh, interpersonal theory uh, was applied somewhat to uh, things like depression, uh, schizophrenia. Now he he thought there was a type of schizophrenia that was uh, so-called organic and progressive and uh, corresponded to what was then called dementia precox, a sort of slowly de deteriorating kind of uh, disorder. But he also thought that there was uh, a treatable schizophrenia uh, and uh, he thought that, as I would follow his thinking, he, the person who becomes schizophrenic uh, is experiencing some intense anxiety that is part of the not me. It is the dissociated segment of the personality that uh, originates from the early experience uh, and uh, remains uh, potentially uh, a disorder when uh, one develops, say, into adolescence and one begins to uh, experience intimacy, uh, sexual hormonal changes develop, the personality and organism is then confronted with something that uh, activates what has been dissociated and cannot be integrated and dealt with, uh, resulting in a psychotic disorganization, which often will either proceed to panic and uh, states such as a catatonic excitement or it might rather resolve into a paranoid formulation where the person calms down, but he ends up with delusions about explanations as to what's happening to himself. And that involves a lot of projection and blames and so forth on others. Sullivan felt that uh, once growing up, is uh, through various stages and he put a lot of emphasis on uh, being exposed outside of the family to playmates and to other where one learned to experience uh, competition and cooperation and even at a higher level collaboration with others. When one went to school, had contacts with teachers, one is exposed to another kind of a way of looking at uh, events in life. And this expands the person's horizon and helps uh, alleviate some of the things that were contributing to a bad me and not me. Sullivan especially thought that it was a favorable prognosis if the person in growing up had had some kind of chum or pal relationship, uh, that what Freud called uh, the latency age, uh, before adolescence, uh, one had a particularly close exchange and interchange, not necessarily sexual, that came later, but had usually some kind of sharing of one's innermost secrets and questions and a kind of comparative uh, exposure that widened one's capacities and bases for sense of self-esteem and a sense of not feeling as odd and estranged and uh, different from others. He said uh, he didn't, didn't think we could find the uh, answers, at least these days, in uh, the brain. He f thought that uh, it was due to experience, and this follows very much like Meyer. Um, the interpersonal theory uh, 
was appealing to uh, not only psychiatrists but to people doing naturally doing family therapy, uh, group therapy, uh, dance therapy, motion therapy, psychodrama. All of those things led themselves to uh, looking at uh, family dynamics. Um, the interpersonal optimism felt that uh, one could modify that one's experience, uh, if a, a favorable kind of experience, could be made up for what might have been missed earlier in life. Uh, for instance, uh, Sullivan, uh, along the lines of what Kempf did, Kempf came from Hopkins and uh, as an analyst at St. Elizabeth, he created a hospital within a hospital so that he had a psychoanalytic research ward. And this was during the time that uh, Sullivan was there. So when Sullivan came over from St. Elizabeth to uh, Shepherd Pratt in uh, 1922, he created a research ward, a unit. Now, it wasn't it exclusively his patient, but he had all of his patients who were young males were on his, this special unit at uh, Shepherd. And uh, Sullivan, I think, felt that uh, conventional medical training, including nursing training, biased people against his kind of interpersonal approach. Uh, he selected uh, male nurses. He allowed one uh, female nurse, Betty Winstead, was the only female nurse on the unit. And he hired and fired the personnel. And he hired uh, homosexual men as aides. Now, they didn't do their uh, sexual activities with patients, but he felt that they were tender, receptive, and uh, that they might change uh, and provide the kind of supportive, uh, non-threatening, non-anxiety uh, relationship. In fact, Sullivan did not work that much directly with his patients, but more indirectly uh, by meeting with uh, extensive time with his uh, aides. Uh, Sullivan, however, would have been interested in uh, medications and so on because, uh, but he died in January 1949 and the uh, medications didn't begin to appear until the early 50s. But uh, there were other things that Sullivan was interested in. Now, he very much granted that there were uh, things like uh, uh, inherent uh, types of uh, activity that might depend on genetics and so forth. but. He felt we couldn't do much about that, so that's why he focused. Now, he did, uh, for instance, uh, he tried uh, using uh, whiskey with patients, where he, uh, with a schizophrenic patient, and he had this one case that I came across where he gave periodic uh, small doses of alcohol, and the Actually, the patient uh, made a rather remarkable improvement as a result of that treatment. And I think he was the first psychiatrist to record interviews with patients. Uh, this was before uh, electronics and wire recordings and tape recordings. Uh, he used a stenographer. And uh, he explained to the patient that he could not remember all that they talked about. And he wanted it taken down so that he could study it uh, at his leisure. Uh, we have uh, a number of those recordings of interviews with patients and of conferences. And I've written a paper published in uh, the journal Psychiatry 
I think in the early 50s somewhere, um, about, or no, it must have been in the 60s, but uh, it was on Sullivan's contribution and it contains excerpts from uh, his uh, interview and uh, it also critiques some of his approach to patients, which uh, in some ways was very gentle, but in some ways was rather uh, confronting and uh, brutal in his efforts to get the patient to uh, sort of give a history that would indicate what the trauma was. And so, of course, it was out of the patient's awareness and unavailable. So uh, that usually led to very little in the way of information. The patient uh, says, uh, I know who you are. And, uh, something about uh, the cops. Uh, you're one of the cops and so forth. And uh, then he talks some other delusional stuff about uh, 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 finally Sullivan confronts him with uh, and uh, I guess you were going to have snow in the summertime? And uh, the guy says, sure, it's possible. And he said, isn't that a little bit cuckoo? <laughs> <laughs> Sullivan says, <laughs> Sullivan says, yeah. <laughs> Sullivan said that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, and are you eating well? And are they treating you kindly? And how are you sleeping? And do you find enough to do with questions like that? When it comes Sullivan's turn, he zeroes in on some possible conflict and the patient becomes evasive and uh, even defensive. And um, why do you ask that or something? The patient says, well, I ask because I want to get to know what ails you. <laughs> I asked because I expected to get an answer, <laughs> things like that. It's really quite different.